Right. So what I would do is judge everybody on a one through 10 scale. You've seen me heard it, talk about you should judge yourself on health, wealth, happiness, one mm -hmm. through 10. What's my health? All right, well, I've gained a little weight. I don't know, probably mm -hmm. an eight right now. My wealth, yeah, I made some money. I'm probably a nine. Mm -hmm. Happiness, I don't know. You give yourself a one through 10 score. Now, here's what I would do. Go to our top 10 allies, that first initial list. Give yourself a score, according to America, who our allies are. So maybe one or two get a nine or a 10, mm -hmm. sure. right? Like right. I trust UK, maybe a nine, maybe a 10, but right. I trust UK more than Canada. I, I trust Australia, all right. Yeah. Japan, we did go to war against them. They right. did do the Pearl Harbor thing. Yeah. But we kind of got to trust them against maybe they're an eight yeah you know Next germany germany which makes they, they kind of were the nazi people but that now they're sense. the not nazi people i can trust them to an extent all right. right right france they've always had our back right south korea they're really helping us against north korea all right mm -hmm. israel look you know there's questions all right but they definitely have our back mm -hmm. especially in that region who am i going to be allies with afghanistan iran yeah yemen syria lebanon the countries that are literally shouting Death, Death to America? America? Well, that's not going to happen. So what's happening here is you're, a lot of times you're left with what's called the lesser of two evils. Mm -hmm. All right, like, I didn't really want to become allies with Germany. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole Nazi thing. Right. But now we got to put something like NATO in place mm -hmm. to curb our newest, stronger threat, enemy. which is Russia. So mm -hmm. sometimes your enemy turns into an ally. Ah. So Abraham Lincoln had a quote that said, the best way to destroy an enemy is to make them an ally. And that's what's happening is here is we've turned enemies into, into allies. allies. So all these countries are bringing something to the table for the United States, whether it's militarily, whether it's politically, whether it's economically, whether it's strategically. Mm -hmm. But only one country of their, our top 10 do people say they're bringing nothing to the table and not only are they bringing nothing to the table, they're a parasite, and we should probably eliminate all of them and kill them all. Does that make any sense? No. So It what? just screams illogical, emotional, and irrational. And that's where I want to basically get the conversation back to is like, all right, you might have some issues, but you want to go scorched earth against an ally to do what? Help Iran? Help North Korea? Explain how this is helping you. That's my biggest issue. Question. Question. Didn't, I'm not sure. This is just hearing bits and pieces from other things on the internet. Part of Israel and what they're fighting for, that whole argument, isn't because some of the land was the other side. Wasn't that some of where this comes from? It was like Israel took away from them. That's why they have this type of, relationship yes. isn't that correct or great great question because a lot of people are like dude i don't even know what the hell's going on here correct like where does this yeah. stem from per se? so this is what is called a land dispute okay it's happening in ukraine and russia mm -hmm. as we speak right russia came in took some land right ukraine's like yeah i don't know about that that's mine yeah it's happening in myanmar and but like this is human nature mm -hmm. And there's going to be disputes and there's going to be negotiations and there's going to be treaties and there's going to be accords and there's going to be alliances. Right. That's how this thing works. Right. But what under no circumstance should it be is from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. What does that mean? We want it all. And we're not going to stop until we kill all of you. Mm -hmm. That's what these chants mean. That's why when these chants are like, yeah, I don't know mm -hmm. if you guys know what this chant really means. Mm -hmm. By the way, there's a map of just the entire Middle East. See if you can find that map. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a very important map mm. to, to find. Uh, go one more. Go one more. Whose was it? There, no, it's a different one. There it is right there. Uh-huh, this is what I was thinking this about This is too. very interesting. Yeah, this is what I was thinking okay. about too. So, and I'm not dismissing how Palestinians feel. They actually have a right to feel a certain way. I get it. Okay. But the answer shouldn't be, well, fuck you, I want it all or I'll kill you. Uh -huh. It's a negotiation. So what you're seeing right here uh -huh. is just a picture of the Arab world, okay. the Muslim world. How many countries do you see there? One, two, three, four, five. There's about 20-something countries. Okay. Now, they're all in what color? Yellow. 
Now there's one country blue. that's in blue. Israel. And that is the only Jewish country. Mm -hmm. So what we're having a conversation of is how much of that blue should it, Israel actually have versus not? But then if you take a big picture and you're like, yeah, well, you kind of got a lot of the yellow, like all the yellow, like it's basically all yellow. Mm -hmm. I'm down to work out something with the blue. Yeah. But I'm telling you straight up right now, I'm keeping some of the blue and I'm not leaving because this is our ready ancestral homeland. Mm. And it says it in the Bible. It says it even in the Quran. It says it in the Torah, the land of Israel for the Isra Israelites and the Jews. Mm -hmm. I didn't make that up. It says it in the holy book, the Quran. Mm -hmm. So if it's like, yeah, well, whose land is it? You know, there's this whole conversation of like, you know, Americans kind of came in and took the right. Native Americans land. Right. Yeah, I hear you. What do you want to do? Like, we're in America now. Nobody <laughs> has more of an ancestral homeland than Israel does to that blue little speck right there. Mm -hmm. So do I understand why the Palestinians want to fight for some land? Of course. But this is what happens in a negotiation. And it turns out, and this is tough to say, the Palestinian, it's called the PLO with Yasser Arafat. Mm -hmm. Arafat, it used to be a nationalist organization. And now under Yahya Sinwar, they're basically an Islamist organization. Mm -hmm. they, they went from being, oh, you know, we need our rights. We're being a nation. Uh, you know, the Palestinian people, which that's a whole other conversation if there ever really was a Palestine or not, mm. versus uh, God wants us to have this land and we'll kill you if you're on it. Islamist mentality. Mm. So this is what's happening in this part of the world. So I pray that they can come to a conclusion of a two-state solution. I pray, mm -hmm. listen, you come to the table, we come to the table. You know, everyone's calling, you know, cease fire now. You've seen this? Right. So, yeah, I agree. But the, in order to do the ceasefire, we gotta kind of got to do a few things. Before. You know what we got to do? Yeah, you know like the, the hostages need them back. that you came in and stole? Yeah, we're going to need them back before we have a ceasefire. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, all the rockets you're shooting into our country? Yeah, you kind of got to stop that stop. if you want us to stop. Right. So everyone's talking about Israel stopping a ceasefire. I'm with you. Yeah. But there's, you know how they say it takes Steps. two to tango? Yeah, yeah. What's two. Hamas doing? They're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So here's what I know about Israel. They're not going anywhere. Mm. Like, they're just like, look, you know, we've been murdered and executed all over the world. Yeah. We kind of needed to find our own home after World War II. We have our own, own home. And we're going to fight for it. Mm. And they have a very interesting philosophy, especially with all that yellow right. around them. They're basically like, look, if you mess with us, we're going to fuck you up. Because that's the only way. This was, you know, who basically taught them that. Mm. This is Ronald Reagan. This is peace through strength. If you ever hear Trump go, you know, if you come at Trump, I'm going to come at you 10 times harder. Yeah. This is their mentality. Mm. They're like, yeah, you're, you know, you ever heard of the concept of it's an existential threat? Yes. You know what existential means? No existential exist they no longer want you to exist so dan bilzerian was like yeah they're a parasite and the world is way better without them yeah israel's like yeah i don't know about that bro yeah we're gonna kind of have to a say in this yeah and we're gonna fight back so the arab world israel in blue arab and yellow this is sort of the neighborhood that israel is in Mm -hmm. And all those countries around them, specifically around them, Syria, Iraq, mm -hmm. Palestinians, Lebanon, they're all armed with Islamic terrorist groups mm. that whose entire life is predicated on one thing, death, to death and destruction mm. to Israel and to America and to the West. Mm. So if you're like, yeah, I don't know, which team am I on? I, I know what team you're not on. Yeah. That is ISIS, Al-Qaeda, the Taliban. Iran, uh. whatever team they're against, you Definitely. should probably be for. Yeah. Now, that means you're on team <coughs> Germany. Well, we kind of had beef with Germany. Yeah. That, mean, that means you're on team NATO. Well, we had beef with Before, some yeah. of the countries. That means you're on team Israel. That doesn't mean you need to be 100% agreement with them. Right. 
What, what do you want to be on Team ISIS? Mm -hmm. What's going on here right now? But he also said he's been to Saudi, Dubai, UAE. So okay. what was his point in that? So, so he's been to those places. And so because he's experienced that life, is that why he supports what he supports? So that... great point. So, you know, not everyone thinks the same. This is going to be shocking. Not all Jews think the same. Not all blacks think the same. Not all yeah. whites think the same. Not all men think the same. Right. Not all women think the same. Not all Latinos think the same. We had this conversation with uh, the other day with Joy Reid. She's like, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to look real stupid if you don't oh, yeah. uh, vote for the black girls. Like, well, hold on. So now I have no... Say. Say. I have no independent thought. I have no volition. I just... I'm voting based on the color of my skin. This is a very slippery slope. Right. So what also you need to understand, this is what I've learned, that the Muslim world, the Arab world, is not just like, this is how we operate. Mm -hmm. In fact, go to that other map of all the countries that have an agreement with Israel. If you can pull, not this one, not that one. No, the other way. Yep, there it is. You just had it. Mm -hmm. So these are the countries that are like, yeah, all the drama, all the beef that, you want to do we're actually gonna have a peace agreement with israel and just be cool with these guys mm. because they're actually not the ones that are affecting our life they're not the ones that are bringing terrorism and death and destruction into our countries they're actually bringing technology peace prosperity advancement and finance mm. so we kind of want to work out a deal with them now you see morocco you see egypt you right. see sudan you see jordan you see bahrain <laughs> and the last one list is you see you, united uh, arab emirates yes do you know that Dubai is in the UAE? Uh huh. This is the country. He's like, yeah, I, I go there. It looks good. Right. It's because these countries, and I'm going to put Saudi on this list because they're getting there. Yeah. These are the countries who are like, yeah, I thought that Israel was the enemy, but I've done my homework over the last 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Yeah. It's actually Iran. Mm. That's the enemy. It's actually Iran that is funding the terrorism in our region. Mm. So, again, choose your enemies wisely. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. So this is why you have countries like the UAE, mm -hmm. who's arguably one of the richest countries in the Middle East, that with Qatar, mm -hmm. who are like, yeah, it's probably better for us to actually be friends with Israel than it is with Iran. Because there's also something... This is going to blow your mind a little bit. Uh, you know, in America, we have Republicans and Democrats. Right. Right? Right. Pretty yeah. polar yeah. opposite. Yeah. You know, in L.A., in the gangland, they got the Bloods and the Crips. Right. Pretty opposite. Yeah. You know, if you go in Miami, you know, you know, there's cats and dogs. There's a lot of, th you know. Do you know in the Muslim world, they actually have a very specific rift, way deeper than anything we just discussed. Are you aware of this? Mm -mm. This is called the Sunni and the Shiite. I've heard I had to learn this. Uh -huh. There's countries that believe a certain way, and there's countries that believe another way. It is basically like Republicans and Democrats times a billion. Oh. Times a thousand years. Mm. You think they have a little yeah. issue with one another? Big time. Can we go back to that enemies list real quick? Yeah. Uh, it's like the, 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 the map of who's whose enemy. The map? Not that thing. It's, oh. It was all the pictures of the two countries yeah. of who's whose enemy. See if you can find those real quick. This so one? Yemen and Saudi Arabia. Right. So we're fighting a war. Yemen is funded by, you ready? Iran. So ah. Yemen is enemies with Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Arabia. That means we're ah. becoming more in line with Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Arabia. By the way, ah. there's, a, there's a picture of a prince. He's called Prince Mohammed bin Salman. He's the prince of Saudi Arabia. There he is right there. Um, there's two pictures of him. That's him next to Donald Trump, next to Shinzo Abe, who's oh the prime gosh. minister of Japan. There's even Vladimir Putin over oh, there yeah, to the Putin's right. Putin's in there. So this is the G20. But then go to the other picture that you have of him where he's on the cover of the magazine. Uh-oh. There he is. So this man right here is trying to make Saudi Arabia great, great. again. Wow. So he's basically saying, yeah, um, oh, that makes sense do you know that, now. You know who he did a $2 billion deal with? You oh. ready for it? Oh. Who's Jared Kushner? Jared Kushner is married to Ivanka Trump. Mm. Who's Ivanka Trump? That's Trump's daughter. Oh. So, Saudi Arabia 
has invested in Jared Kushner. That makes sense. AKA America, AKA Donald Trump, AKA let's try to make my region wealthy, peaceful, and prosperous. Ah. AKA I'm not aligning with Iran. So again, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. By the way, not too long ago, mm. 2001, we were the country basically saying, keep those enemy lists up, by the way. Hey, uh, we got we to gotta find out what happened with 9-11 with Saudi. Yeah. What happened there? Ah. Uh. What's going on here? Here's some other countries that are enemies. Ukraine and Russia, we knew that. Mm -hmm. Iraq and Kuwait. Israel, Palestine. North Korea, USA, we know this. Mm -hmm. So choose your sides wisely. Now, like I talked about with Reagan. That makes sense. Someone that agrees with you, 80% is a friend and ally, not a 20% traitor. I'm not saying that you need to agree with Israel 100% as an ally, mm -hmm. or Germany, or South Korea, or Japan, right. or Canada, or any of these people. Mm -hmm. But are you on Team USA, or are you on Team North Korea? Mm. Are you on Team Iran, Hamas, or are you on Israel? Mm -hmm. You kind of got to pick a side. Well, what about the people who are from those countries? The people who are from Hamas. Like, I, how okay. do they? How well, do they? From Hamas, that's a problem. If you're from Palestine, yeah. So, for instance, but they come here and they're living here now. You have any Russian friends? I've had Russian. I friends. have Russian friends. Yeah, I have a few. I actually. like them. Yeah, me too. That doesn't mean I agree with the uh, their government. You have any Chinese okay. friends? Yeah. Okay, we have a, someone that works with us from China. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Amazing girl. Yeah. That doesn't mean I like. Chinese China. policies. Mm -hmm. So, by the way, there's people in America that I love, and there's people in America that I hate. Mm -hmm. Like, there's people I'm like, yo, this guy sucks. Yeah, yeah. But that doesn't make me not love America. So what happens is you try to conflate a person, a people, a country, a government, and Israel is the only country where you're like, yeah, I don't like the government, so kill all of them. That's it's a, a very strange. slippery slope here. Very strange. And if you don't call it out, this is where normalizing death and destruction of an entire race is like, yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. So this is what's happening right there. Mm -hmm. So Israel has formed agreements with many countries in the Muslim world who recognize, yeah, dude, I, my bad. I thought that we actually had beef. But we don't. But it's actually the Islamic Republic of Iran that I have beef with. Mm -hmm. And they're basically, the world is changing. And what's happening is all the people in America... They're going to be basically, so here's what we're going to talk about Candace Owens for the last 20 minutes. Yeah. They're yeah, going to be left with a very tough decision. Yeah. Because are you on the woke, liberal, DEI, ESG agenda? Right. And you're going to vote for Kamala? No. Or are you going to vote for America first, make America great again, Donald Trump? So whether you're Dan Bilzerian, whether you're Nick Fuentes, whether you're Candace Owens, who do you think you're voting for, Kamala or Trump? Mm, are you asking me? Yeah, I'm asking. Um... I'm definitely leaning to Trump. Yeah, they're all voting for Trump. Yeah, yeah I'm very... Yeah. But do you know that now they're all saying, I'm never going to vote for Trump because he supports Israel. Because Trump, here's, what, here's the challenge that oh, Candace yeah. Owens is going to have. Mm. And Dan Bilzerian and Nick Fuentes is, Trump is way more on Team Israel, our ally, than he is on Team Palestine, Iran, Iran. Houthis, Hezbollah, China. terrorist ISIS organizations. Right. He's like, I'm the guy that destroyed ISIS. Now you wanted to be friends with ISIS? Yeah. It's not going to work that it's way. It's not going to. So these people are going to be very disappointed <clears throat> when they vote for Trump and Trump basically protects Israel. Because if mm. we show that top 10 list of our allies again, yeah. they're one of our allies. allies. Yeah. Do you know how many deep, dark secrets we know about each other, the CIA, the Mossad, the FBI, mm. governments, organizations, how much stuff and when you go to bed each night, it's like, listen, this is between you and me. You got it. You yeah. got it. Yeah. You think you're just going to abandon that because Candace Owens had the epiphany that she thinks that Israel may have had a role in 9-11? Here's the biggest issue mm. I have, which we'll talk That's about that. That's issue. Rat, this is where conspiratorial uh, theories go awry. Rather than being like, it's Osama bin Laden... Yeah. Who plotted and planned and got funding right. for 9 11. Rather than say it was him, it was like, you know, I'm kind of hearing it might have been actually the Jews and the Israelis. Well, what do you mean? I don't know. I read a book. Well, what, what, do you, what, what evidence do you have? Well, I, I heard that there were some Israelis dancing. Mm. Dancing where? What? What do you mean? 
But they actually ended up catching the perpetrators of 9-11 who admitted to planning 9-11. All right, so now we're a little cognitive dissonance here. Mm. Rather than the people that actually shot and killed JFK, Lee Harvey Oswald, and the CIA potentially, it's like, well, what role did, did Israel have in this? Yeah. All right. Weird questions. Are you coming to the vault? Oh, what's the vault? You know what the vault is? The vault is the ultimate event for entrepreneurs to level up their game and learn from the best in the game. Last year, we had Tom Brady and Mike Tyson. And I said to our CEO, Patrick Bet David, I said, how are we going to top that? He said, how are we going to top that? How about The Rock? So this year, Patrick Beck David went out and got Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So he's going to be there along with PBD, The Biz Doc, and me. Yeah, if you want to join us at the Vault Conference, check out thevaultconference.com. It's going down in West Palm Beach, September 4th through 7th. If you want to make more money, improve your business, and expand your network, you have to be at the Vault. We'll see you there. Oh, you like that? Well, if you want to see more of that, check out this clip right here. And if you want even more, check out this clip right here, only on the Southcast.